Today's video is concerned with a very beautiful continued fraction representation of pi. And this is due to Bronker, and I'm mostly following Michael Hirschhorn's explanation of this formula or derivation of this formula. And so you can find it on his website. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we will show that pi is equal to four over one plus one squared over two plus three squared over two plus five squared over two plus seven squared and so on and so forth. So I think we can pretty clearly see a pattern here. After this first one, we've got a bunch of twos and then here we have consecutive odd squares building. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's get started with our derivation which will involve a certain integral to start with. And so we'll call it i sub n, and it'll be the integral from zero to one of x to the two n over one plus x squared dx. So let's maybe calculate the first couple of values of this to see what we have. So let's note that i zero is equal to the integral from zero to one of one over x squared plus one dx but that's simply the arctangent function evaluated at one, which is well known to be pi over four. So there's our zeroth one of these integrals. Now let's look at the first. So we have i sub one, that'll be equal to the integral from zero to one of x squared over one plus x squared dx. But I'm gonna sneak in the number zero in here. I'm gonna add the number zero, I should say, and I'll do that by adding one and subtracting one. That'll leave me with the integral from zero to one of x squared plus one over x squared plus one. That would be the plus one, and then minus one over x squared plus one dx. But check it out, this term right here cancels down just to the number one, and then this term that's left over will contribute something related to i zero. So I think it's pretty easy to see from what we have above is that this will be one minus pi over four. Okay, nice. And then anything like bigger is really not worth working with. That being said, we will be interested in the sum of consecutive versions of this formula. So let's notice the following like nice thing. And that's i n plus i n plus one. Well, that's equal to the integral from zero to one of x to the two n plus x to the two n plus two over one plus x squared dx. But we can simplify this quite nicely. We'll have the integral from zero to one of x to the two n times one plus x squared over one plus x squared. That's just from factoring out a greatest common factor from the numerator. But now we've got just a fancy version of the number one there. We can take the antiderivative, evaluate it, and we'll see that we get one over two n plus one. So while it's hard to calculate i n or closed form for i n, we can calculate a closed form for these consecutive terms pretty easily. Okay, so now let's do one. So now let's do one more small calculation before we move on to like the meat of the problem. And that is, let's set r sub n equal to the quotient i n plus one over i n. And now we're gonna do a little bit of a calculation with these r sub n type terms. These are gonna be the terms that we'll actually want to construct our continued fraction over here. So let's do the following. Let's look at one plus one over r n over one plus r n plus one. And let's see if that simplifies. Well, we can rewrite this as one plus, let's see, we'll have i n over i n plus one. And then in the denominator, we'll have one plus i n plus two over i n plus one. Now, let's make this a less complicated fraction by taking the numerator and the denominator and multiplying by i n plus one. 
So let's see what that'll leave us with. Now in the numerator, we'll have i n plus one plus i n. That's because it cancels out the denominator here and then builds up that number one. And then in the denominator, we'll have i n plus one plus i n plus two. Okay, nice. But check it out, we know i n plus i n plus one is this uh, reciprocal of 2n plus 1, and thus i n plus 1 plus i n plus 2 will be the reciprocal of 2n plus 3. So putting that all together, we'll see that this is equal to 2n plus 3 over 2n plus 1. And as we move to the rest of our calculation, I'd really like to focus on the two ends of this equation because that'll be most useful for where we're going. So we've got this object, which is underlined in magenta, is equal to that nice rational expression over there on the right-hand side. Okay, so let's keep going. Here's a smattering of what we've done so far. We defined this family of integrals dependent on n, and then these ratios of consecutive integrals. Then the first integral is pi over four, the second, or maybe I should say the zeroth is pi over four and the first is one minus pi over four, making this first ratio four over pi minus one. You can check that pretty easily just with simple arithmetic. We also came up with the following kind of weird looking formula, which may not seem useful at all, but in fact, it will be useful. Okay, so now let's see where we can go from here. I'll maybe start by multiplying both numerators by r sub n to make this look a little bit nicer. So let's see, that'll leave me with r sub n plus one over r sub n plus one plus one on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll have two n plus three times r sub n over two n plus one. And now let's cross multiply. So cross multiplying will give us 2n plus one times rn, and then plus 2n plus one, and then that'll be equal to 2n plus three times rn times rn plus one plus 2n plus three times rn. Okay, nice. But let's look at what we can do now. Maybe we'll take this term here and move it over to the other side of the equation, but it'll maybe most nicely combine with that term over there. So if we subtract this off, well, we'll be left with exactly two Rn's left. Okay, great. And now maybe we could factor an Rn out of the right-hand side. So then we'll have Rn times the quantity. So 2n plus three times Rn plus one plus two. Okay, nice. But let's look at what we've got. We have 2n plus one equals all of this stuff right here. But I think that gives us a clear way to solve for Rn. Notice that Rn is equal to, let's look at it, 2n plus one over 2 plus 2n plus 3 times rn plus 1. But notice that's going to be the seed for creating our continued fraction. We've got these increasing odd numbers right here, and then this addition of 2. Okay, so now let's collect that at the top as well, and we're ready to put this all together. So here are the two most important formulas that we have so far, the R0 term, and then this recursion. Well, really it's like a backwards recursion of Rn in terms of Rn plus one. And now we're ready to do the final calculation. We can invert this formula to solve for pi pretty easily, and that'll leave us with pi is four over one plus R0. And from here on out, we can just, and now we can take this R0 and write it in terms of R1 using this formula. So that'll leave us with four over one plus, so rewriting R0 using this formula will give us, let's see, one over two plus three times R1. And now we can rewrite R1 in terms of R2 using this formula. So that'll leave me with four over one plus one over two plus, 
and then we'll have three times, and now R1 will be, let's see, it'll be three over two plus five R2. But now notice we can put these two threes together and things are starting to shape up. So putting those three two, two threes together, we'll have four over one plus one, I'll call that one squared actually, and then two plus three squared over two plus five R2. Okay, nice. Now I can continue this process on and on and on. And that'll leave me with something that looks like this. We'll have four over one plus one over two plus uh, three squared over two plus dot, dot, dot. And then let's see, what will we end up with like after n or n plus one terms, depending on how you're counting. So we'll be left with 2n plus one squared over two plus 2n plus one times rn plus one. And then to go from here to this continued fraction, we simply take the limit as n goes to infinity and that'll push that like infinitely in that lower right direction. Okay, so I think that's a pretty nice derivation of this formula. Now, let's see how good it is at approximating pi when we truncate it. Now we're going to glimpse into the question, how good is this continued fraction as an approximation if we like truncate it at a certain point? And I think the answer is not a very good approximation. So if you end at this five squared term, then you'll get 14 over five, which is 2.8. That's obviously less than pi. If you end one step further at the seven squared term, you get something that's approximately 3.395. That's bigger than pi. But neither of them are really close to pi. Now, if you go all the way to the 37th term, you get just under 3.1, still a bit too small. If you go to the next term, which is the 39th term, you get something which is a bit bigger than 3.19. So that's a bit too big. If you take the average of those, you get closer. So the fact that you have to go this far and you're still really not super close to pi makes me think that this is not a very good approximation. Maybe if you're interested, calculate what happens after 100 terms or 1,000 terms. Post what you get in the comments. And I think some of you probably know how to measure the rate of convergence. And uh, you could maybe give us a clue also in the comments as to the rate of convergence of this, um, of this continued fraction versus some other ways of writing pi. And if you stuck around this long, well, thank you. And consider subscribing to the channel. It would really help us out. And that's a good place to stay. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.